Hi guys, this is Sadek from Droidbin.com and in this video, we'll show you how to route the latest Paranoid Android ROM using Magisk. So as of now, I'm using the Paranoid Android 13 ROM onto my OnePlus 70 phone, but the steps are applicable across all the phones and across all the versions of Paranoid Android. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and do keep in mind that the usual method of routing the phone which involves booting to custom recovery and then side loading the magic zip file will not work on this phone i've already tried that method and it will not work so you will have to take the longer up route and in the longer route you have to extract the boot image file patch it via magic and then flash it via passport command and then use the direct install you cannot simply side load the magic zip file as you do for other custom roms so with that in mind please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started so as of now, my phone is currently not rooted. Let me show you. I'm using the app root checker. You can install it from Play Store. So as you can see, my phone is not rooted. Let me show you once again. So if I launch the app and type on verify root. So my root is currently not installed on my phone. So my phone is not rooted. So we'll first root our phone. And after that, we'll pass the safety net test as well. So we'll be carrying out both these tasks across this ROM. So please take a backup of all this data and let's get started. First of all, you'll have to install the Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So download it from the link given in my guide and then extract it onto your PC. In my case, I have done the extraction in e drive. You could extract it anywhere you want. Once that is done, you now have to enable USB debugging. This is required to execute ADB commands. So go to the settings menu on your phone. From settings menu, go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. So now go to system. You should now see developer option. Go there and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. Tap on OK. Likewise, you might get an RSE keep fingerprint prompt as well. Tap on allow. Once that is done, let's now verify the debugging connection. So for that, go to platform tools folder, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside the platform tools folder as you could see. Now type in ADB devices and hit enter and make sure you're getting a serial ID. If you're not getting a serial ID, then unplug and replug your phone to the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the official USB cable that came with your phone, and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure you're getting a serial ID. Once you're getting this ID, you could now move over to a next step. So next step, you now have to extract the boot IMG file from the Paranoid ROM. So for that, download the Paranoid Recovery ROM and not the fast boot ROM. In some devices, there are Two ROMs, for, for example, in case of OnePlus 7 series, it has a fastboot ROM and a recovery ROM. So for the sake of identification, if there is an image keyword next to the ROM name, it's a fastboot ROM. If there are no image keyword, it's a recovery ROM. Moreover, if you extract the ROM file and if you are seeing the partition.img file, it's a fastboot ROM. And if you are seeing a, a payload.bin file, then it's a recovery ROM. So as of now, we need the recovery ROM. So Make sure to download the recovery ROM and then you have to extract the payload.bin file. So extract this bin file from the recovery ROM. Once that is done, you have to download the fastboot enhance tool. The link for this tool is given on my guide. So download it and extract it onto your PC. You would extract this tool anywhere you want. Once you have done the extraction, I have done this in D drive. Now transfer the payload.bin file from the recovery ROM onto the fastboot enhance folder. So here's the payload.bin file in the fastboot enhance folder and will now be extracting the boot IMG file from here. So launch the fastboot enhance tool via the exe file. Then go to the payload dumper tab and click on browse. Now select the payload.bin file from here. So let me do so. Here's the payload.bin file of the custom ROM. Select it and click on open. It will now load the bin file over here. Once that is done, go to the partition tab and select the boot file and click on extract image and select a location for the ease of Convenience, let's choose the desktop only. So click on desktop and hit OK. It will now extract the boot IMG file onto a desktop. And one major reason why we are using this tool because it gives us an option to extract individual partition file, which is not possible via other methods. So using this tool, you could simply extract one single file from the whole firmware. So with this, we have extracted the boot IMG file. We have got the message here. So let's now check out the results. So let's go to the desktop. And here's the boot IMG file. So copy this boot file and paste it in the platform tools folder. So let's now paste the file over here. And as you could see, we have now got the boot IMG file inside the platform tools folder. So let's now move over to our next step. You will now have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode. So just to re-verify, 
So next step, you now have to patch the stock boot IMG file via Magisk. So first off, transfer this boot IMG file to your phone as well. So copy this file and then transfer it to your phone. If your phone is not visible here, then bring up the notification panel from here and expand the Android system. Then expand the charging this device option and select file, file transfer. This will bring your phone over here. Let me show you. And from here, you just need to paste the boot IMG file, which you have extracted from the custom ROM. So we have now just transferred the boot IMG file as you could see. So now that we have the boot IMG file, we now have to install the Magisk file onto our phone. So likewise, you should download the Magisk app onto your phone. I made a guide as well. At the time of recording, the latest is version 25.2. So download the IPK file from here. I've also linked the official GitHub page. You could verify the change log from here. So you could check out the change log and then download the IPK file from here. Once you have done the download, make sure to transfer the APK file onto your phone as well. So both the boot IMG file and the Magisk APK should be on your phone. Once that's well and good, so let's now install the Magisk APK file. So launch the file manager app onto your phone and let's now install the Magisk APK file. So tap on it and hit install. It will now launch the app. Now open the Magisk app and just a minute, let's now launch the Magisk app. And from here, tap on install and next to Magisk, then select and patch a file and choose the boot.img file. So as you can see, here's the boot.img file. It's the boot.img file of the, of the custom ROM which you have extracted from the payload.bin file. So select the boot.img file and tap on let's go. The Magisk will now patch this file and it should only take a few seconds. Once the patching is done, it should place the file in the download folder. So go to your phone from your PC and under the download folder, you could see this is the Magisk patch file. So copy this magic patch file and transfer it to the platform tools folder. So with this, we have the file under the platform tools folder. Just wait a minute and we have got the file over here. So let's now move over to our next step. So now that we have patched the file and got it, we will now have to boot our phone to the fast boot mode. So open CMD window inside platform tools folder, type in ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit enter. Your phone will now boot to the fast boot mode. And it should only take a few seconds. You could also use the hardware key combination, but it's the universal command, and that's why we always use this command. So as you can see, our phone is now in the fastboot mode. Let's now verify the fastboot connection. So type in fastboot devices and hit enter. It should show a serial ID. If it's not showing a serial ID, then you will have to install fastboot drivers. So for that, you could refer to my guide on how to install fastboot drivers. I also made a separate guide and a video as well. So once that is done, please go and install the fastboot drivers. Once you have installed the fastboot drivers, let me show you the guide once a minute, just a minute. So let me show you the guide as well. So this is a guide. I have also linked a video on that. So make sure to refer to the guide or the video and install the fastboot drivers. So the video should be here as well. This is the video file as you could see. So make sure to install these drivers. And once you have installed the drivers, make sure you are getting a serial ID and the CMD window next to fastboot devices. Likewise, use the Windows X shortcut key and choose device manager. Now expand the Android phone section under device manager and make sure your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So if your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface and you're getting a serial ID, then it means that your PC is able to read your phone in passport mode and you could now move over to our next step. So next up, we now have to boot our phone using the Magisk Patch Boot IMG file. So for the ease of convenience, let's rename it to something shorter. So I'll be renaming it to Magisk Patch Boot so that it becomes easier to identify. So the complete file names become magic patch boot.img. So let's now boot our file using this patch file. So type in fastboot boot, just a minute. Type in fastboot boot and the name of the file, which is magic patch img dot img. So make sure to re-verify the file name from here and the file should be there in the platform code folder as you could see. And this is the file name. So type in this name and hit enter. It will now send the boot IMG file to our phone and let's wait while that is happening. So it should only take a few seconds. So let's wait while that is happening. So do keep in mind that you should always first boot your phone to the magic file. You should never flash the file directly. It is could cause a great issue with your phone. So you should always first boot your file via the magic flash boot. And if everything is working well and good, you could then permanently flash it. So as of now, we have just done a temporarily boot via the Magisk boot file. 
and let's not verify the results. So as of now, you could see the magic files there onto our phone. So launch the magic app now. If you uh, wait for the app to launch, and it should take a few seconds. So the first boot up could take a longer. That's completely normal. Now just tap on install and choose direct install and tap on let's go. It will now permanently flash the boot IMG file. And once that is done, you need to tap on the reboot button. So let's wait for that is happening. So the file is being flashed and it could take around 10 to 15 seconds. So that's completely normal. Now tap on reboot and the phone should now boot to the OS. So I was saying you should never flash the boot IMG file directly because if there's something wrong with the boot IMG file, then your phone might end up in a boot loop or a soft break. But if you're doing a just a one time boot, then if something is wrong with your phone, you just need to do a restart and your phone will boot to the OS without any issues. So that is why it's recommended to only use the fastboot boot command and never use the fastboot flash boot. So you should never directly flash the boot IMG file. First, boot is using the magic flash boot. And if it's working well and good, you could use the direct install of magic. That is what we have done onto our guide. On our guide, we first use the password boot command and we booted our phone to the magic patch and then we have used the direct install. Now that we have used the direct install, the magic has been installed permanently. You can now launch the app and test the same. The phone is now rooted. Let me now show you using the root checker app as well. So you could install this app from Play Store. So now launch the root checker app and tap on verify root. You will now get a magic prompt. So just tap on grant. And with this, as you could see, our phone has now been rooted permanently. So with this, we complete the first half of our guide. Let me now show you how to pass the safety net test as well. So for that, as of now, the safety net is failing onto my phone. Let me show you that as well. So I'll be using the Yasnack app. You can download the app from Play Store. This is the app. So let's install it and type on open. Make sure you are online. Now type on run safety net test. And as you can see currently, we are failing both the basic integrity as well as CTS profile match test. So our ultimate aim will be to pass both this test. So with that in mind, let's get started. First and foremost, you have to hide the magic app onto your phone. So let me show you that as well. So for that, launch the magic app onto your phone and then tap on the settings icon. From settings icon, you have to tap on hide the magic app and then enable the toggle next to allow from the source. Now go back and give it any name of your choice. For, for this video, I'll be re renaming the magic app to Dwightwin. You could give it any name of your choice, then tap on OK. With this, we have hiding the magic app. It should only take a few seconds. And the magic app is now hidden and it will now ask you to make a shortcut. It's completely optional. I don't want the shortcut, so I will type on cancel. And let me now show you. As you could see, there is no magic app onto my phone. Rather, it has been replaced by Dwightwin. So for, from now onward, this is, will be our new magic app. So now launch the magic app and next up you have to install the systemless host module. So go to the settings menu of magic and from there tap on systemless host. It will add the module. So now go back, go to module section and make sure it's showing as a systemless host module has been added. Once that is done, you now have to enable Zygisk. So for that, tap on the settings menu icon and enable the toggle next to Zygisk. It will now ask you to reboot your phone. We'll do so later on after the next step. So we will not be rebooting our phone now, we will do so after the next step. So you will now have to flash the module. The name of the module is flash safety net fix. You could refer to my guide and download the module from here. So just a minute, make sure to download the new module. So download it and transfer the module to your phone. So let me show you currently I have done so. So this is my phone and this is the, so let me now, reconnect my phone to my PC. So for that, I just need to change it to file transfer mode. So as you can see, my phone is there and I have transferred the safety net fix module. So make sure to transfer the module onto your phone. You could download it from the link given in my guide and transfer it here. Once that is done, we now have to flash this module. So for that, launch the magic app, then go to the module section, tap on install from storage. And now let's select the safety net fix module. So choose this module and it will now be flashed. Once done, you could now reboot our phone. So tap on reboot. So you could also reboot the phone after enabling Zygis, but we had combined both these methods. And after that, we did the reboot just to save a few times, to save a few extra minutes onto our phone because otherwise rebooting our phone twice within a few seconds will unnecessarily take up additional minutes. So after enabling Zygis, you could flash the module and then reboot your phone. So let's now reboot our phone and after that you now have to hide the root from the apps of your choice. 
So these are the three compulsory apps and after that we'll be adding the route from the banking and payment app as well. So let me show you, let's wait for the phone to boot up. Our phone has now booted up, so let's now launch the Magisk app. And as you could see, it's now showing us yes next to Zygisk. This signifies that Zygisk has been enabled. So let's now proceed ahead and hide the route from these apps. So go to the settings menu. From here, you have to go to the enable the toggle next to enforce deny list, not tap on configure deny list. So these three apps are there on across all the phones. And this is an optional app, which is only there on some phones. So you'll have to hide the route from all these three apps and the fourth app as well if it's there on your phone. So let me show you how this could be done. So tap on the overflow icon at the top right and check mark show system app. Let's now search for play service. So it's the play service. So expand it and make sure to enable all its toggle. As you could see, all the toggles are enabled on play service. Likewise, do the same for play store as well and enable that all the toggle next to it. Next up is the Google services framework. So let's search for that app. So it's the Google service framework app. So also enable all these services. And the fourth one is there, Google Play Protect Service. So search for that and check if it's there on your phone or not. So let me make a search as well. So the Play Protect app is not there onto my phone. If it's there on your phone, then make sure to hide the route from this app as well. After that, you will now hide the route from any banking and payment type of your choice. Once that is done, you now have to remove the, the data of all those apps. So in my case, I have to remove the data of Play Service, Play Store and Play Service Framework. So let's do that as well. For that, go to the settings menu. From settings, go to apps and tap on see all apps. So first off, let's select the Play Service. Then go to storage and cache section. Tap on manage space and tap on clear all data, then tap on OK. Likewise, do the same for Google Play Store. So select the Play Store app from here. Go to storage and cache. Tap on clear storage and tap on delete. After that, we have to do so for Google service framework. It's a system app. So tap on the overflow icon at the top right and select show system. Now let's search for the services framework app. So this is the app. Go to storage and cache section. Tap on clear storage and tap on delete. Once that is done, if the Google service framework, after that, you also have to make sure to check the app for Google Play Protect Service. So if this app is there on your phone as well, then make sure to remove its data as well. Once that is done, you'll now have to remove the data of the banking and payment of your choice from which you have hide the route. So make sure to delete the, the make sure to remove the data of that app as well. So just to re-verify, it's the Google Play Service, Google Play Store, Google Service Framework, and Play Protect Service if it's there on your phone and the banking and payment app of your choice. Once that is done, you'll now have to restart your phone. This restart is compulsory, so make sure to restart your phone right away. So do keep in mind that this boot up might take up a few additional seconds. That's completely normal and nothing to worry about. So let's wait for that is happening. And after that, we could now simply check the result and we should now pass the test as well. So let's now verify the same. Our phone is now booting to the OS. You could refer to all the steps from my guide and all the links have been given in my guide as well. The link for this guide is given just below the video in the description section. So you could refer to my guide and as well as when required. So as of now, our phone is now booting to the OS. And this boot up was compulsory. After you have removed the data, you have to do a re restart. That's compulsory. Anyways, now that the phone is booted up, let me tell you one more thing. If you now go to the settings menu and go to the Deny list section, you might have been seeing that the Google Play service is missing and the Google service framework has been unchecked. It's just a UI bug and nothing to worry about. In fact, in the backend, everything is working well and good. It's just in the front end, GUI is not working. So that's why it's showing here. So in your case also, the Google service framework might be missing and the service framework of Google Play service might be unchecked. That's completely normal and nothing to worry about. So anyways, let me now show the results. So launch the Yasnak app and just tap on the run safety in the test. So as you could see, we are now passing both these tests and you could now use the banking and payment app of your choice. So guys, on that note, I round out this video on how you could route the paranoid Android ROM. Likewise, I show the steps to pass the test as well. If you have any queries, do it know in the comment section and please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.